Once upon a time, in a world oh so far away, there was a land made out of love, so perfect that it never rained. The grass massaged you as you walked, and as the wind blew by, it sang. The mountains moved from side to side to get a small glimpse of their king. They said he was the most kind-hearted king that anyone could know. His voice was medicine that healed not only body parts, but souls. His power was untraceable. Wells and rhinos were ants to him. When he'd walk, canyons formed. When he exhaled, he filled the earth with wind. And when he spoke, the fields would grow. Creation opened up its ears. The waterfalls would pause midway and look as if the rocks had beards. The earth was still listening for whatever its king had to say. And the two townspeople that lived there walked with this king every day. These were the days where love was so close you could reach out and grab hold. The days the two townspeople never once got sick or even old. The days before the clouds would fall or there would be pain during birth. These were the days we don't remember. The days before we were cursed. You see, the king went to high lengths to show his kind heart and his love. The star spelled out his good intent to the townspeople from above. When they looked up, they got to know him from the detail in the clouds. And when they walked the land he made, their two hearts couldn't help but smile. But one day, out of nowhere, the king saw their two hearts had turned dark. Their skin had lost its perfect shine, and their tired eyes had lost the spark. And his love letters and his art became ignored amongst his children and the king knew that that meant one thing they must have met the villain evil had a personality lies have a father figure where the king is love and life the villain's death and a grave digger where the king creates flight for the birds and detail for the trees the villain destroys all good things and he deceives each time he speaks and this time he deceived the townspeople the king saw they had changed they said things they were never meant to say they felt anger and shame and a storm rolled in in their skies and clouds covered them from his light. Lightning blinded them, and thunder made them deaf to the king's might. Darkness invaded the sky's light, and a curse filled the perfect land. Suddenly townspeople ran from the king and didn't trust his plan. They wanted to be by themselves. The whole land split in separation. They turned from the king, the creator, and the hope of their nation. They became ugly and torn. They went from townspeople to trolls, from sons of a king to the villain slaves with lies and tattered clothes. The king watched as his perfect land and his townspeople bled to death. Everything he made perverted and looked at him with disrespect. The more they reproduced, the more selfish they got, the more they ran. The king outstretched his perfect arms, but they built walls to block his hands. And like zombies, they roamed the land, dead without his great love to feed them. They ignore him, but they can't explain why deep down they still need him. It's because it's cause they were made for his kingdom, but they stood cold and indifferent. And the very stars sang of this great king, but the people didn't. They became so full of lies, they couldn't recognize what's real. They got so far that soon to them the king became a fairy tale. The land turned to a myth. His power and his kindness turned to fable. The king watched as his own creations labeled him less than able, and with his power and might, he could have reduced them to nothing. He could have rained down his wrath and showed them his force, but he loved them. For the king so loved the broken world and the slaves to the villain that though they saw him as nothing, he regarded them as children. Though their eyes were glass and smiles were chipped and rotten hearts were black, he saw each runaway, each dead face, and wanted his children back. So with all power and all love, he came to the land dressed like them, frail, unimpressive, poor and young. When people looked, they saw a man, but that man was also their king king. He wrapped himself inside their curse, reintroduced himself as one of them, and met them in their hurt. Imagine being him, coming into a world you planned and made, and being hurt because no one there even remembers your name. His perfect hands touched imperfection, longing to restore his land, but to each one who recognized him as a king, both saw a man in his heart broke at what he made. The state of his world made him cry, and his offer of love 
love was often met with hate, and this is why he spoke a different language. His language was truth, and theirs was curse. Their land was a land filled with lies. He brought them the complete reverse. He stood for what they hated. The curse made all bad good and good bad. So we watched his children turn as he convinced them he was their dad. He carved each curved prostitute soul, but wouldn't quit till pain was over. Navigated his worst nightmare with the patience of a soldier. But the townspeople were blood sick. Their ears swelled at what he'd bring till it got to the point some plotted death not knowing he was king. The same king who rocked waves to sleep and drew the oceans like a painting. Their cursed hearts made plans to hurt him even though he came to save them. Angry mobs foamed at the mouth and barked like dogs blinded and sick, plotting to kill their only hope. They gathered, blood dripped from their lips. When the time came, they grabbed the man and beat him with the hands he made. He came to free the hostages, but they bound him up like a slave. They punished him for loving them, torturing him until he was dead. He made skin to shine and protect, but they beat the skin off his head. Murdered by the same ones he loved, the great king fell as a dead man. But what nobody knew was that the death was part of this king's plan. You see, you see, you see, the king was full of love and so strong that he couldn't die, but men could die and they were cursed. They couldn't beat it if they tried and if nobody intervened, death was what men would have to face. So what he did was take their punishment. The king died in their place. He gathered all the curse up on his back like only he could do, grabbed each man's heart and held it. So when he was killed, the curse died too. The penalty, the effect, the death was put on his head and conquered so the townspeople he loved won't have to face it any longer. Even though they hated him, his love for them was so devout that he freed them through death and allowed their hate to carry it out. He made a land made out of love, but they turned that love into tombs and they viciously beat him, but he freed them all with the same wounds and to prove that it worked, after they killed him, he came back to life to prove to them that he was king the whole time and that he was right to prove he beat the curse. He rose up from the curse's effect. That effect was death. He came back. Then the villain had nothing left. No curse could hold men. The king stood victorious without an equal. And because he died for them, he gave victory to the people. And because he rose again, the power of the curse was over and men could walk with them like they were originally supposed to. His power, amen. His power was passed to them. The villain's plan foiled the rum, and the townspeople went from enemies to refugees to sons, the best love story in the world. What the king did, he did for them. A happily ever after's coming too. But where do we fit in? I read about this king, and there is one thing of which I'm certain. It's that when I read this love story, I know I'm the townsperson, and the land, the curse, the sacrifice, all of it's true, you see? And I know this king chose to die, and he did so for you and me. Two options come from that. I can decide to live under the curse, or I could choose the king, bow to his love, and get free from my hurts. I feel the love from this great king building a castle in my path, and I can run from him or accept what he did and call him dad and friends. I did, and I met him, and he became realer than breathing. He became closer than life. I bowed under his love and teaching and I met others who love him and we serve him without doubt. But to those who might be confused, let me tell you what it's about. It's not about rules or tradition. It's about him knowing what's best. It's not about feeling great all the time. It's about his... It's not about feeling great all the time. It's about his peace and stress, not something you pretend or try out. Friends, it's not about emotion. It's about diving head first into his all-encompassing ocean. It's about letting go of all, not keeping half curse and half truth, about knowing he is who he says he is and does what he says too, about acknowledging you turn tail and begging them to take you back, about following him all your life and leaving that curse where it's at. 
So I stand here and I ask you, what will you choose? The curse of freedom. Will you stay slave to the villain or get welcome to the kingdom? Choose right now. Bow to the king as savior, confidant, and friend. Or choose yourself. Stay cursed and die and never see this king again. Fight the good fight. Finish the race and keep the faith until you go. Or ignore his love like a fool and trust your own hands with your soul. I want you to know who I love. I want you to meet this king I serve. I want you to know why you were made and go from brokenness to worth and know one day he's coming back to take us to a place that's better, to a home where lightning spells out Yahweh's name in cursive letters. <laughs> to a land, to a land to a land that's like a fairy tale, a perfect land with him, and we can walk with him each day together, smiling like a friend, but until then, stay in the race, and if you waver, choose a side. I chose to be a slave to him, and through him, victory is mine. Through his blood, I have been set free. His sacrifice made my heart well. Please choose him too, and watch your life transform into a fairy tale. Hell.